Ronnie Alcyon is a kid from Detroit, Michigan, who just trying to take it to another level at this point. You know, trying to be the best. I compete with the best all the time. So I just want to show people on a bigger stage. But my style is beautiful, sexy, slick, smooth. And it's a, um, honestly, it's a pure boxer's boxer. So if you really love boxing, then you'll love me. First of all, Dennis Okoth is a um, man of God. And uh, second, Dennis Okoth is a fighter. Um, I, say, I can say Dennis Okoth, uh, I come from nothing. So this is my time to show the world what God gives me. No, I never seen Ronnie before, but uh, what I know about him, I know he's a good, he's a talent too. He's a talent boxer. Yeah, he's a, he's a good boxer. Well, there we have it. You heard some words from Ronnie Austin and some from Dennis Okoth is coming up in tremendous Ladies upset. and gentlemen, once right again, right. fight fans watching all around the world at fight.tv. We are back at the legendary Paramount for Joe DeGuardia's Star Boxing Rockin' Fights 35. And right now we have lined up an ABO America's Welterweight Championship fight. Let's bring out your fighters. Please welcome to the ring, Dennis Okoff. And now, ladies and gentlemen, making his way to the ring, his opponent, Ronnie Ostian. Here we go, boxing fans. Joe DeGuardia Star Boxing in association with Arsenal Boxing presents eight rounds for the ABO America's Welterweight Championship. Your judges, James Kenny, Kevin Morgan, and Marcel Varela. And when the action begins, your referee in charge is Al Lobianco. And now, introducing first, your challenger fighting out of the red corner tonight, wearing white and yellow. He weighed in at an even steady 146 pounds. His record is impre impressive with 10 victories, only one defeat, seven wins coming by way of knockout. He fights out of Las Vegas by way of Detroit, Michigan. Introducing your challenger, Ronnie Teflon Rose. And now his opponent fighting out of the blue corner, weighed in at 146.6 pounds, wearing white tonight. His record, three victories, two defeats, and one draw, two wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Silver Springs, Maryland. He is the Lions Cup amateur silver medalist, junior Olympic silver medalist, 
the reigning, defending, undisputed ABO America's welterweight champion, presenting Dennis Billabog O'Connor. And here we go. Referee Al Lobianco calls both of these welterweights. Gentlemen, New York State Athletic the Commission rules the are in effect tonight, and I gave you instructions Ronnie in the Austin dressing room as to what I expect. Seven and knockouts I'm going to ref against the fight. I want nice and clean. I want you to protect yourself at all three, times. Two and Listen to my one. commands during the course of the battle. Two of his touch gloves and good luck have come by way of knockout. This year, he's one and one with a six-round decision loss in Brooklyn against Tyrek Irby and a fight that you were at ringside, you called back on June 28th, Nick, against Dylan Moran of Ireland, who came in 10-0. and 0. What an upset that one was. It really was. And once again, you cannot go by this fighter's record. Dennis Okoth, Billabong, as he's known, is a real deal fighter. He's a national champion in his homeland. He is really, really packed with a lot of power. If he connects and hurts you, and he's a finisher, Randy, he'll finish you. So that's exactly what he did to a hot, hot Moran in the Catskills at World Resorts. So a cop, you better be, he better be ready. Uh, Austin, uh, Austin better be ready for a cop. I'll tell you that right now. So they both are wearing the white trunks. Both are right-handers. So you're going to see that left foot forward. You're going to see the left jabs. And Okoth has a very powerful left jab. That was some shocking victory by Okoth over a national champion from Ireland by the name of Dylan Moran. A third-round TKO up in the Catskills. I mean, being that you were there, and it was seen right here on star boxing was it was it a lucky punch or was it something that he was winning from the opening bell no it was a very competitive fight i think i had moran up in the fight was looking really sharp looking really crisp and a cop just kind of wore him down caught, caught up with some good shots periodically and then once he hurt moran he finished him and he went after him and he was very very good at that didn't get wild Picked his shots and finished Moran and won the belt convincingly. And you know what? You got to give him a lot of credit. He went in there 2-2-1. Two, two, and one. He took on a very, very hot prospect with Joe DeGuardi's store boxing, and he did what he had to do and won. And he's a legit guy. 2-2-1, two, two, and one, but he's legit. Well, Koth just got nailed by a sharp right hand for the chin, and I don't think Ronnie Austin realized how badly he had Koth hurt because his legs did what I call a Mr. Bojangles. <laughs> and they shook and he danced and he backed away, but Austin never poured the pressure on. You know, Ronnie Teflon Ron Austin. I love his, I love his nickname, I really do. Teflon Ron. <laughs> Scheduled for eight rounds. Let's see how they pace each other, or pace themselves, or if they do. Very humid night. Final seconds, round number one. Feeling a sort of a feeling of each other out that first round, right? Randy, I mean, I didn't see anybody taking you know, that next step and hitting anybody with really any big shots. Kind of that feel out process. It, it was quite a feel-out process. This is a welterweight battle scheduled for eight. Let's see if they pick up the pace. You're looking into the corner of Ronnie Austin. He fights out of, he lives in Las Vegas. Comes from Detroit, Michigan, with a record of 10 and one. Big amateur record, 95 and 15. Now you're looking into the corner of Dennis O'Connor out of Silver Springs, Maryland, born and raised in Kenya. Comes here with a very deceiving 3 2 and 1 record. Referee Aldo Bianco. Having some words with the corner of Austin. 
as we begin round number two. Again, this is an eight-rounder welterweights between Dennis O'Cuff in the black shoes and Ronnie Austin in the white shoes. A lot of muscle being used in there. Al Lobianco says, get out of it. I love Al Lobianco. I really you gotta do. got to love him. I really do. He's just, he, you know, he's the sign of a great referee is you don't really know he's in there. He's talking to the fighters. He's letting them know what's going on. But he's just keeping an eye on the action. And he's just, I respect him so much. His dad, Hall of Fame. Uh, Johnny Lobianco. I mean, one unbelievable. Of the, one of the best. Absolutely. Uh, He's remembered for so many outstanding fights. Floyd Patterson, Oscar Bonavena, and of course, Dick the Tiger and Emil Griffith. Yes, there's another one. And uh, Roberto Duran, Ken Buchanan, one of the, I think it might have been the first title fight that I actually was working at. How about this? You ready for this for oh, trivia? Yeah. Al Lobianca's dad, his last referee fight ever, Muhammad Ali, Ernie Shavers. Oh, there we go, 1977. What an unbelievable. Yeah. That, I mean, you talk about 15 rounds of nonstop. I mean, you know, great fight and a great job by his dad. Absolutely was. His father always did a great job. And uh, a lot of it, I think, has rubbed off on Al. I think he's a terrific referee. No doubt about it. He's, 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 I love him. Um, Ronnie Austin got hit with a couple of shots there, and, uh, and Okath kind of just taking his time, wearing him down. But I'll tell you right now, Dennis Okoff will not run out of gas. I'll tell you that right now. He's in shape, and he'll go all eight rounds hard. So Ronnie Austin's going to have to put some things together and try to collect some rounds here. Um, but he, and he throws every punch. Okoff throws has bad intentions on it. I, I love that expression, bad intentions. Mike Tyson <laughs> used to say that all the time. He said, I throw every punch with bad intentions. I want to hurt you with every shot. Nice body, dig to the body by Okoff. Now, Austin, you know, listen, right now, he may be trying to play a little cat and mouse with Okoff, but I'll tell you, he shouldn't take these shots. They'll wear him down, and uh, he's getting hit with some good shots here in this round. Yeah, it's one thing if it's a four-round fight. This is scheduled for eight rounds, and he's getting hit. Oh, there's a, a right hand, a low right hand that I believe Al Bianco was just out of position on that one. And I don't mean to say he was in a bad position. Sometimes when you're on one side, you can't, yeah, you can't be all over. Yeah. You can't see every single shot sometimes. You know what? Austin's hit, hit Okaf low two or three times that round. And I think he just did right there, right below the bell again. The belt again. I gave that round to Okaf. I got it even one-to-one -one right now. What do you think, Randy? I think that Okaf is starting to pull away in this fight. He's doing what he wants to do in there, and that's to make a brawl out of it. Austin looks in good shape, not breathing hard, not breathing through his mouth. Some deep breaths there from Okaf. Now they're telling Austin to take some deep breaths through the nose, out through the mouth. He took a few of them, takes a shot of water. Nice pack on the chest of Okaf. Cool him down a little bit. Warm night here at the Paramount. Hot in New York. And they expect a real hot weekend. And we've got time called by Al Lobianco. I'm not sure why. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they bum rushed Lobianco when he kind of wanted to make it, you know, he wanted to get them okay. all in the center at the same time. You know, when a the referee is in there. He is in control. And if, yeah. if you, you're not ready for whatever reason, or if the guys are taking advantage and sneaking, if you will, out of their corner, you got to put them back in that corner. Okoff's got his man Austin on the ropes. Austin hit him with a nice right hand, and he's picking his spots, but... Yeah, he doesn't want to sit in there and he doesn't want to take too many punches because a cop will, he'll keep coming. Austin is telling him, come on. He could get off those ropes if he wants. He doesn't want to. 
Randy G with Nick Garone. Nick, what do you think he's trying to do there on the ropes? Is he, I, you is know, he... I, I think his game plan is, is let me sit back, let me gather myself, let me pick some shots, let me get some shots in, and see if Okop can punch himself out. But I can tell you right now, that's not going to happen. That strategy, you need to... You need to assert yourself, you need to stick with your game plan and stick to it and try to win rounds here. You know, you only have an eight round fight here. I mean, even though it's not four, it's not four. Four is just, you can't make it up. But eight, you can make it up. You have a slow round or if you start slow. But still, eight rounds is not 12 rounds. And he better start winning rounds right now, uh, uh, Ronnie Austin. Midway through round number three, scheduled for eight. Welterweight contest between Ronnie Austin in the white shoes and Dennis Okoff in the black shoes. Two nice body shots, but a nice uppercut comes back by uh, Ronnie Austin. Bianco says, okay, watch it, guys. Let's break it up. Back to the center of the ring. On the right of your screen, Okoth, hard jab. Austin pulls out with the left hand. Nice right hand by Ooh. Austin. Nice body, a nice left hook. No, no. Good sportsmanship on the part of Okoth shown and I got to tell you, he probably heard Al Lobianco in the dressing room. He said, I do not want you guys taking any foul blows. No rapid punching, nothing on the back. And, and he won't put up with that. He's a very impartial guy, and he'll, either guy is going to get nailed. hands on the ropes. They take their arms, they slap this, get your hands off the rope. So I'm wondering if Okoth is feeling what we thought he might not feel. Is he starting to get a little bit fatigued? Because I think between the two of them, I think he actually looks a little bit more fatigued than Austin. But I do think that Okoth is winning the rounds here in the fourth do, round. Do you think the last fight that Ronnie Austin lost, he lost his last fight, do you think that affected him in any way? Because, you know, here we have we have an Olympic, uh, a junior Olympic champion, a ringside national champion, highly touted prospect, and uh, he's in a pretty big fight right here. And, you know, maybe this, you know, you know, Ronnie, maybe that loss did something psychologically. I don't know, Randy, what do you think? It could be a very good point. I mean, some guys take a loss very well and they learn from it, and some guys don't. And that fight was back in January of this year against Marquise Hawthorne. It was a six-round decision in the Mohegan Sun in Uncasville, Connecticut. That was a very lazy jab just thrown by Austin. And it's the lazy jab that sometimes get countered with hard right hands. As they lean on each other, muscle each other around, you saw Okoth push Austin off of him, who now backs to the ropes and is not getting off there as he takes a body shot with the right hand. Nice uppercut by Ronnie Austin. Ooh, two good body shots by a cop. Welterweight's going at it here in the fourth round. Schedule eight. And of course, this weekend, big welterweight contest out in the desert. Lost wages. Nevada, Manny Pacquiao. I guess Keith Thurman. Uh, 
many say it's a pick em fight. A nice overhand right by a cop. I got my buddy, gentleman Jerry Cooney out in Vegas right now, gonna be covering the fight for Sirius XM. Well, got me and love the wife, Jerry. we take off for the Amalfi Post. The constant pressure by Dennis O'Connor. You know, he's just, he, you know, you know, every time I, I watched Dennis Akoff fight last time, and I'm watching him right now, and it's, it's, and I hate to say this because, you know, it's such a cliche. It's like Dennis Akoff is fighting for his life. He's fighting for, for, for respect. He's fighting for, you know, to get to that next level. You know, starting out two and two, getting a huge win against Moran last fight, fighting a junior Olympic champ right here. He, for him, there's no tomorrow. Every time he hits the, hits the ring. Well, you questioned before whether that decision loss back in January affected Austin in a, maybe a bad way. Can you imagine if he loses his second consecutive fight? Half of this fight, four rounds in the books. I'm wondering why the uh, you don't see the safety mats underneath these fighters. You know, I was just thinking the same thing last round. I was like, you know what, this is a fight that could use it because, you know, you got these guys are very overheated. It's an eight-round fight. You really need those mats under there to collect any dribble down water, trickle, I should say trickle down water. So uh, I don't know why they're not putting it in there. But I can tell you this, Randy, I'm thoroughly entertained. This is another one of those exceptional fights. I've given the first three three rounds I gave to uh, Okat. I gave Austin that last round. I'm just curious how the judges are scoring it. It is round number five. And are these guys feeling it? I'm sure they are. Who is feeling it more? Both guys in white trunks. Okat with the black shoes, red Boxing gloves. Ronnie Austin in the white shoes and the more colorful Everlast gloves. You know, I think Ronnie Austin's corner told him in that in that corner last round, in between rounds, listen, you need they had to light a flame under him and say, listen, you gotta start winning rounds. You gotta start piling these rounds up or you're gonna lose this fight. He's coming out here a little bit more poised, a little more focused, and uh, he's using that jab, getting back to his game plan, not not sitting in the corner and not doing, you know, letting him take, he's not taking shots. So a lot of this, it, it seems like he's fighting this round differently. But I don't like how he's using his jab. He's keeping that left jab. Ronnie Austin, the man in the white shoes. Watch. He's carrying it basically in his pocket. He is not bringing it back at all by his chin. He is so open for a counter right hand. Gets away from that right hand. You know that, that cost. That was, a, that was close. That was close to a to a shot. And remember, in this kind of heat, when these guys are starting to feel it like this, it just sometimes takes one shot. One hard right hand, one hard left hook. I don't like what Austin is doing with that left hand. Just more or less laying it out He's there. He's kind of pouring it out. And uh, instead of, listen, if he needs to throw punches right now. He just gets hit with an overhand right on that lazy left hand. And Okap is just, he's coming after him. He wants to win this. Listen, it looks like Okap wants to win this fight. It looks like Ronnie Austin wants to just hit him with a couple of good shots and see if he lands some. And, and see that where, where that gets him. You know, Okaf is throwing most of his shots this round up towards the head. And a, most of those shots are being blocked. Jerry Cooney, my partner on Sirius XM, one of the hardest punchers in heavyweight history, always says, stop aiming for the head. Go to the body. Hit the guy on the, the arms, the biceps, the shoulders. Because those shots land. Okaf still looking for headshots. Again, there's a hook up towards the head. There's a hook that misses. 
There he digs to the shot. body. Another tough close round. Ronnie Austin has hung in there, but hasn't thrown a lot of punches. And I don't know what, the, what his game plan is, but I can tell you this. We're going into the sixth round right now, Randy, and I have a cop up in this fight. I got him up too, but I think Ronnie Austin is coming on a little bit as we head to the sixth round. Talk about what a great card. <laughs> Joe DeGuardia, Ron Cat, they never cease to amaze me with these competitive fights. And what a venue this is. You heard us talking about it earlier. The Paramount Theater, where we have seen so many other shows. Uh, my buddy Tracy Morgan has been here. Tracy wrote the forward to my, my book that's out now, Glove Affair. Uh, and we've seen him here on numerous occasions. We've seen other bands here and everything. But there is just nothing like a fight at the Blue Horizon, and which is now defunct in Philadelphia, and here at the Paramount reminds me so much of the famed, fabled Blue Horizon. No doubt, and I mean, at the press conference the other day, I, I kind of alluded to that, that Joe is kind of making this like the new modern day Blue Horizon. You know, he's, he's putting competitive fights on month after month after month, and uh, he's creating such a buzz here in the New York area with these fights, and it's, it's awesome. I mean, it's great, it's, it brings back the old days where guys had to had to start out in a small venue. Ooh, Robert, Dennis Apoff coming after him. Dennis um, putting a lot on every punch. And watch Austin's punches. When he punches, there's not much on those shots at all. See, not, nothing down there on that right hand, which is a little bit low. Watch when he throws the jab, too. It's just a point. See, that was a point jab. Nothing on it. And everything Okaf has thrown has bad intentions on it. Nice body shot, another nice body shot. Could the legs of Ronnie Austin be deserting him? He's not moving as much, whoops, don't punch. And that's exactly what Al Lobianco is saying. And they're listening to him. I don't like that left jab of Ronnie Austin at all. That was the first time that he put anything on a left jab. See, he's laying it out there, pawing with it. Good right hand try by Austin. Takes a right hand to the face. Wow, Dennis Akoff keeps, keeps, keeps connecting. I'll tell you, I'm so impressed with Dennis Akoff and his determination and his grit and his perseverance. I mean, he's just, he's coming after Ronnie Austin. Like, I mean, uh, you know, he wants this. Okaf made his professional debut in 2017. He had one fight that year. In 2018, he had three fights. And this year, 2019, this is his third fight of the year, coming off a very big victory, the biggest of his career yet. A TKO in three over previously undefeated Dylan Moran out of Ireland. Okaf wants to prove it was no fluke against Moran. Coming to you from the Paramount in Huntington, Long Island, New York. Where this weekend, Huntington, Long Island, all of Long Island, most of New York, most of the East Coast is going to be pounded on by a heat wave of, they expect, over 100 degrees. Well, they said with the heat end index, it's going to be feel, I think it's going to be like 95, but it's going right. to feel like 114. <laughs> you know, it's funny, I'm, I'm one guy, I love the heat. I love when I go to Vegas in July, in August, and it's 115 degrees 
at just plain old 115. You don't hear about heat in there because it's 115. Yeah, 115 I, is 115. Deal with it. But you know the thing is, is out there, if it's 115, it's 115 in the shade. <laughs> I mean, it is hot. You don't have yeah. the humidity, but it's just hot. Heat doesn't bother me. Ice on the road bothers me. The only place I want to see ice is in my glass. <laughs> Round this, seven. And this weekend, my wife called a queen run. We're going to see plenty of ice in the glass over in Amalfi, Italy. It's going to be like, see you, Nick. Wow. <laughs> That's great, man. Can I sneak in your luggage? <laughs> <laughs> and of course, this weekend talking about hot, Manny Pacquiao, Keith Thurman, a fight that has been long in the making. This one, welterweight bout, the man you're looking at, Ronnie Austin. Good one-two by Austin. Real good shots by Austin. They were telling him in the corner, they were telling him, get to work. Referee Al Lobianco doing an excellent job. Nice body work by Okap. Goes upstairs with the right nice hand. Nice right hand by Okap. He is relentless. He just doesn't give a guy a moment to rest. You know, boxing, of course, three-minute rounds, you can take a rest by stepping back or whatever. Whenever he tries, Okaf is in his face. Doesn't let him rest. He wants you know, to fight for 180 seconds around. You know, and a lot of times, you know, you can break somebody mentally. You can take their heart out of them just by that pressure. Because you think in your head, oh my God, you know, this guy is all over me. And it, you start to lose that faith that you can actually beat the guy and you kind of break him. Um, I'm not saying Ronnie Austin's broken. I'm not saying that at all. But in those circumstances, sometimes you can win fights by sure, uh, sheer determination. This is the first time, though, that I'm seeing some frustration on the part of uh, on the face of Austin. He's getting hit with shots, and then he tries to take a step back. He's and taking some punishment. Yes, he is. And Okaf just doesn't stop coming. And he comes again. Jab to the head. Austin tries a couple of shots, drives a right hand. Not much on Austin's punches. And you see Okaf leaning into his shots. Okaf being a real good sport about it. I know a lot of guys who would have already taken <laughs> those shots to the back. No doubt about it. Which tells me that in the dressing room, where Al Lobianco gives some of the best instructions I've ever heard, they listen to him. You know what? You respect a good referee, and you listen to him, and you do the right thing, and it's a and it's a great fight. If you're not, then you're going to get penalized. Good finish by Okaf. There's a shot to the back, and now Lobianca is going to go over to the corner. I think he's going to have a little word. At this pace, in this heat, I am surprised it's gone this long. If you are scoring this one at home, how do you have it? What do you got here, Randy? What do you got going into the last round? How do you have this fight scored? I've given five of the rounds to Dennis Okaf. Only two of the rounds to Ronnie Austin. I'm right there with you. I got it 5-2. I think Ronnie Austin needs a knockout to win this fight. Here we go. The bell beginning the eighth and final round of this welterweight contest. Ronnie Austin against Dennis Okoth. Okoth in the black shoes. Ronnie Austin in the white shoes. Austin tried a right hand to the body, then ate a shot to the body, and Ooh, each nice. time he tried, he nice. gets countered. Nice little sneaky right hand by Austin. Oh, 
Cott putting out that left jab, falling a little bit short, missed with the right hand. And he's been seeing that low-held left hand of Ronnie Austin over and over, trying to take advantage of it, but he just can't. If it doesn't nail him tonight, they, they got to work in the corner of Ronnie Austin on keeping that left hand up. Lazy left hand again. One jab had a little something on it. The second one was just a paw by Ronnie Austin. Oh, nice overhand right by O'Cop. Nice straight right by Austin. And another good right hand by O'Cop. You know, even if they're landing the same amount of punches, and of course we don't have uh, the CompuBox guys here to, to count them out, and even if it's an even amount of punches, the punches that O'Cop is both throwing and landing, he's got to be impressing the judges. No doubt about it. I mean, I, barring a, a knockout here, I can't see a cop losing this fight. Uh, you know, and, oh, nice, he caught him in the upper, he caught, he might have hurt Austin right there, and he hits him with another right hand. You know when you say pressure, it's gotta be effective pressure, aggressiveness, yeah, effective aggressiveness. When you say ring generalship, I think Okaf has it. He is being the ring general, doing what he wants to do. And, and you know what the most amazing part about this as we approach 45 seconds left in the round, the most amazing part about this is you're not looking at some guys like a bona fide opponent, a guy with a terrible round. Ronnie Austin is legit. He's a junior Olympic champion yes, here. He and oh, and Okaf hits him with an over right. And bodies up, and he hits him. He's all over Ronnie Austin. I mean, you've got to see how impressive this is. These guys have fought at a terrific pace. <laughs> terrific fight. As or considered a prospect, he beat two legitimate guys the last two fights. And let me tell you something. 
I give nothing but props to this young man for what he's done the last two fights. And they are shaking hands and everything in the ring right now. We're moments away from getting the decision here. Who's going to win it? Is it going to be Dennis Okoth? Is it going to be Ronnie Austin? We are about to find out. Let's go up to Jazz. Ladies and gentlemen, after eight rounds of championship boxing, we go to the judges' scorecards for your winner. Judge James Kenny scores it 76-76. Judge Kevin Morgan scores it 78-74 for Okoff. And Judge Marcel Barella scores it 77-75. For your winner and... Still, the ABO America's welterweight champion by majority decision, Dennis Pillibug Okaw. I mean, you know, listen, I respect, I respect Ronnie Austin a great deal. And I think he's, yeah. he's a very, very talented fighter. But for him to put on a smirk like something happened like he got robbed i mean that is absolutely nuts i mean he lost that fight period yeah he did have a look i mean uh, like almost a look of surprise kind of feigning surprise he could not have been surprised i mean we saw it uh i had it 78 74 you had it right around the same thing and as we said from the moment the final bell rung there was no question about it dennis o'connor won this on his aggressiveness just on that alone, he won the fight. Effective. Aggressive. But he also hit, he, he he threw so many punches that landed continuously yeah. throughout the fight. And you know what? I think what lost that fight for Ronnie Austin was the beginning of the fight when he was on fresh legs. He didn't scoop any rounds up. He had that hand low. He let himself go in the corner. He let himself get hit with a lot of punches. And I'll tell you right now, I think that he could have won that fight if he would have won a few rounds at the beginning. But Okap, all... All, hey, listen, all the credit goes to a cop. No question about it. And a great job by the referee, Al Lobianco. I mean, he let him work on the inside, broke him when he had to break them. A real terrific job by one of New York's finest referees, Al Lobianco.